Metabo HPT took one of their corded 10 inch miter saws and adjusted it up to be an 18 volt miter saw that weighs in at less than 22 pounds with the largest of the multi-volt battery system on it. This saw is incredibly accurate. It does not slide. It is a single bevel. It has an LED exact cut light, so we have a shadow line to see where our blade cut is going to be. We can turn that on and off. We have a blade break. Very nice, that works together along with some excellent carrying systems in the back so we can move this around. Our bevel to the left is going to be from zero to 45 degrees and there is a nice little setup back here so we can see what's going on and our miter is going to go from zero to 52 degrees on both right and left and we have detents at zero, 15, 22 and a half, 31.6 and 45 and we can adjust and lock this in anywhere in that area. Very easy to get to those detents. Since this is an 18 volt saw, my first concern was going to be power. So I wanted to show you on a four by four how exactly this is gonna cut. We have the two and a half amp hour or five amp hour, 18 volt, multi-volt battery in here. We're also gonna cut left-handed so you can see it. This D handle is pretty easy to use left-handed. Let's give it a try. Not bad at all as far as power goes, it cut right through this. And I think this is going to be one of the largest things that anyone's gonna cut with this saw. Before making that last cut, you see me take this fence and move it. That's basically here so we have something else to hold pieces of wood up against to give us more vertical stability. If we need to bevel, obviously that needs to get out of the way. So once we just flip that over, we're able to make this bevel cut all the way without any issue. Obviously, if this was here, we couldn't make that cut. So it's a nice way of extending the fence up without having too many pieces that slide and possibly lose accuracy. This is a prime example of what I think people would use this saw mostly for. We have some three inch baseboard here, which is close to its max. We're gonna take this, turn it over to a 45 degree angle, and we'll make a cut on the end. I think it's important to note that the blade that comes with this saw is not really meant for trim and you could definitely upgrade it, but for oak that did make a pretty fair cut for a framing blade. If you are doing crown molding, the bevel adjustment has markings on it for 45 or 38 degree crown. Those markings match up perfectly on the miter adjustment of the saw, so you simply pull this over if there isn't a detent and you use that red line, lock this guy into place and you're ready to go. This piece of crown looks a little bit large for the saw, but let's give it a try. Not an issue at all. And we have our nice cut right there. I think it's great that Metabo HBT is getting away from the laser and into the shadow line. That shadow line is an exact cut. I mean, it does not change. Where lasers could be off slightly, and also lasers are harder to see outside. So this cut right here is going to be absolutely perfect as far as where that line comes down. Let's give it a go. The saw seems to do a lot of things well for the trim carpenter. The one thing it doesn't seem to do great at is dust collection. And while we haven't made a ton of cuts, there's a decent amount of dust in the bag, but still quite a bit around the saw and on the floor. So if we wanted to remedy that and put a vacuum on this, we can see we can push this in. It's a bit tight for this vacuum. Once we get it in though, there we look like we're set. But if we move the saw down, the vacuum will fall out. And that's because there is a cutout here on the bottom that is not allowing this to hold and stay in place. This cutout makes me wonder if it's really set up for a vacuum or if the vacuum is supposed to slide inside of here. If it is, that means it's going to be a proprietary connection for maybe a Metabo HPT vacuum that I do not have at the shop at this point. All of my current vacuums want to sit inside 
this little area and stop before we can get a good connection. And you're gonna, we're going to use a little duct tape here to make this work just to try this out. As you can see, we didn't get a lot of dust collection pulled through the vacuum. One of the reasons is there's this little slit that goes through here where this large piece kind of condenses down and gets near the blade. And that area that we see in there is pretty small. So that's not going to really help us get a lot of dust out. We could see dust was coming around this. So it's a little bit unfortunate that this doesn't have a great dust collection ability. Looking at the back of the saw, we can see the battery comes in and out here. This is a very tight fit, and I think that is excellent. We're using the battery that comes with the kit, the five amp hour multi-volt battery. On the top, we have our button to turn on and off the LED lights for our exact cut LED. And then we have a small battery meter up here, which is turned on once you pull the trigger. That will tell you basically if you're getting down in charge and it's really just something to look at on the tool. If you want something more exact, you have to go to the battery and use that. Other than that, this has a great D handle that's very comfortable. There is no rubber over mold here. This is just some grooves in the plastic. The safety is off to the side. That safety button does not do anything as far as turning on or off lights. And then you have the trigger, which has a great brake. This trigger system does not turn on and off the LED lights. This LED light is on or off by this button. It stays on as long as basically you have it on until it times out and then you have to push this button again to turn it back on. Very simple system as far as locking this guy down. It's just like any other miter so you might use. Again, this handle is great. 21 or 22 pounds with the battery. So this is a great lightweight punch out saw in my opinion. Current pricing on this saw puts it at $349 in the kit with the 5 amp hour multi-volt battery, a Metabo HPT fast charger, and this saw. If you'd like to buy just the saw bare tool, it's $269. And if you'd like to drop down to the corded version of this that isn't quite as updated and still has a laser as far as the cut line, not the exact cut LED, it's currently on sale for $179. Now, this is really going to fit in the mobile area as far as I can see. This is $22 pounds. I've said it a couple times. That's very light, very easy to move around, and it would work great for punch out situations where you're coming in and out, doing small work, maybe more precise trim work. And once you have the saw all set up, it is very, very accurate. I think that's where it shines. As far as power we've seen on the 4x4, she slices right through. Power is not an issue. With many, many saws out there, the blade probably should be upgraded for trim work. Just an opinion, I take that for what it is. Other than that, I don't see this as a framing saw, mostly because we are unable to miter cut a two by six. That is what stops me from really saying this would be great for small framing work. I think that's something you have to do in that situation. And it's something that's stopping me from being able to use this out in the field to make deer blinds or other things like that, unless we strictly stick to two by four lumber, which we don't. So with that said, four by four is great. Two by six limits you as far as what you can do with the saw on that two by four. Absolutely no problem. Trim three and a quarter standing up is going to be about your max. You could see what we did with crown. I was surprised it had no issue with that five inch crown. Nice saw. Keep it simple. That's what this is all about. It's still very affordable. Also, I would love to hear your comments and questions on that below, positive or negative. We always take a look at that, see what you guys are thinking. Give us a like in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.